to this harboring a fear that isn't natural to you in the first place. Okay, that just defeats the whole thing. It, it, it's a weak way to be. All right, we've got to start accepting the truth about who we are if we want to empower ourselves and strengthen ourselves and live better lives the way our ancestors want us to. So we can't be afraid of them. We can't be scared, okay? I live in a very spiritually active home. And there are things that happen from time to time that, you know, yeah, it might be something that we might remember from some sort of silly ass horror movie, <laughs> you know? But I am so proud to say that none of my family members is like that. You know, something happens that can't be readily explained, you know? Um, yeah, whatever, you know? That we don't live in fear of our own in this house, okay? Anyway, let me go on and talk about the protection and the dirt. Now, contrary to popular belief, you can't just go into some old graveyard or some old cemetery and just get any old body's dirt. Now, there are some of us who actually can. All right. Those of us who deal with the dead, those of us who deal with the spirits and have been doing such since our youth, for the most part, we are the ones that can and will do it on other folks' behalf because there are certain things that have to be done, certain steps, certain protocols for our protection and for the protection of those we are doing this work for. However, if you are working with your own bloodline ancestors, you're basically working with those who love you because you are them. They are you. You're dealing with your own family. You don't have to follow the same protocols as someone else who's working with non-bloodline ancestors. Okay? Now, graveyard dirt. Ooh, now, well, all that stuff that's out there right now about root work and conjure and hoodoo and voodoo and whatever else, you know, we have um, out of the United States, okay, um, graveyard dirt has been bastardized and perverted into a substance that one only utilizes when they want to inflict harm, okay, when you want to cause harm on somebody, or a group of some bodies, okay? That's where they, that's how they call that. And again, this is a Eurocentric way of viewing it. So for those who are outside of our culture, for those who are outside of the African uh, bloodline, they can't help but, uh, you know, see things through their own perspectives. And sadly, this is a popular conception that graveyard dirt is only used for dark works it's only used for black magic and you know to fuck somebody up and you know because it's a proponent of goofer dust and all that kind of shit well that's not true okay if you are obtaining dirt from the grave of a loved one that you have a bloodline connection to you're going to be utilizing it in the way that our ancestors did. Our African, West African, West Central African ancestors did. Okay? And you can use that for protection. Now, this is how I do it. I like to take a teaspoonful or a tablespoonful of that graveyard dirt in a ratio of three parts or three spoons of powder. Now, the powder. I have used different types of powder. I am currently using what's called Mpimba, which is powdered kale and clay, because it's most consistent with the traditions of my Congo Bantu ancestors. I have also used cascarilla, okay, that's uh, ground up powder dried eggshell and it's usually sold um, in these little Dixie paper cups in a chalk form 
and it's very inexpensive, but it breaks up very easily, easier than an actual, you know, stick of chalk does that you used to write on blackboards and sidewalks and whatever. Um, Cascaria, it, it breaks up very easy. Okay, so you can get it into its loose powder form and then mix it with your ancestral dirt. All right. Now, that's the basic way to do this. There are other ingredients that can be added specific to your ancestors, you and what is going on with you. So any of the extra added uh, ingredients to this medicine, all right, to this protective powder is personal. So if I'm doing your consultation and it is shown that you might need to lay down some protective powder, you're going to get those two ingredients and maybe a few more things, okay, specific to your needs. But generally speaking, you can do this all right now if you've got a protection oil and i've already told you in a previous episode how i like to do uh, protection oil but i don't have a problem with protective oils that are already compounded and marketed as such and you can get them from spiritual supply houses okay or from spiritual workers who compound their own uh, on an as ordered basis um, there is a black owned spiritual supply online called hrsbotanica.com. You can reach out to them for a compounded oil and also check out Miss Coconut Conjurer. You can send her a message if you need a compounded oil. I have some other folks in mind, but I have not um, been given the green light to mention them on my episode, but if I do, I will definitely mention them in upcoming episodes because some of us workers, you know, like to stay in the shadows and go on on personal referral basis when they deal with clients. And I respect that because that is the way a lot of our elders still work today. So now you've got your mixture of powder. Okay, now the amount that I've told you, uh, you might have enough to suit your needs, you might not. Just understand the ratio and make up as much as you need. Lay this powder around the perimeter of your dwelling. Now, if you have a single family home, that's relatively easy to do. That's my situation. It's very easy to do. If you don't live in a single family home, uh, or in a single um, property, you know, on some land, uh, it, it gets trickier. If you're in an apartment building, it gets a little trickier to do that. So what you can do is still lay that powder uh, in the front. You can just make a line of it in an inconspicuous way, okay, around the entry, all right, of your apartment building and lay it in the back, okay, at the entry you can do it like you know if you've got an alley you can do it there all right so you're protected on the inner perimeters of your property okay uh if you've got windows you live in a you know high rise or a walk up or whatever you can lay this on your window sill open the windows and put them on the outside of your windows um, any other way i have not mentioned that is applicable to your living situation you know, if you have questions, hit me up. This is so important. And, um, you know, just tell me what's going on and I'll tell you how to make it work if you haven't been able to figure it out for yourself. So our ancestors are our first line of defense. I have protection oil. I have oil that I keep on the ancestral altars. Those are used to protect. Okay, there are other things that we can use that are very accessible that can protect us. Um, we can put a, a single bay leaf in each of our clothes shoes, for example. We can sprinkle salt in the soles of our shoes. Okay, just a little bit. Um, we can dress the soles of our shoes with things like camphor, camphor spirits, and turpentine. Okay. Um, you can use, you know, your, your protective oils. Like, again, you can dress the bottoms of your shoes with these. Um, 
and this protects against spiritual as well as physical things that could in fact cause us problems now if you're under or you believe you're under some sort of weighty spiritual attack you might need to go for something a little bit stronger now i like to use smoke in these cases burning resins is a favorite uh frankincense you know very very accessible and easy to find wherever you can buy oils and incense nine times out of ten they carry frankincense tears now how do you burn them okay if you don't know how to work with charcoal incense burners okay Char incense charcoals rather there are um, YouTube videos you know check them out where you can actually visually see how to uh, light one when it's ready uh, the proper containers to put them in okay I like to use um, the uh, Asian way of burning I have a little pot and I fill it with some Japanese ash okay it's a white ash and I fill it almost all the way to the top and then when my incense is ready I take it with some tongs and stick it on that ash and kind of you know push it a little bit and then put my resins and things on top and they burn very nicely actually I'm, I'm sorry I skipped a step after I put the charcoal in there, now it's a, a red ember with, you know, some ash on it. Then I cover it up with the Japanese ash, okay, a layer of ash so the resins aren't directly on the burning coal, okay. That ash forms a little bit of a buffer so the resins don't cook immediately, you know, because sometimes when you put resins directly on the charcoal, they, they sizzle and cook and melt and, you know, then they're over. All right, and then you have to keep adding more. So putting that layer of ash will help the incense resin burn slower. Okay, so you now have this nice perfume smoke going for a lot longer. All right, so frankincense, dragon's blood resin, another one that I like for getting rid of negative energy and for protection. OK, you don't you can just burn it in your dwelling. You can take it from room to room. You can sit it in one spot in a centralized spot of your home. You can incense or um, imbue yourself with the smoke. OK, by just standing over it and just letting it, you know, co cover you um, different objects. Like if you wear a protective talisman or amulet, you can, you know, let it sit into the smoke you know your protective mojos if you carry one so on so forth they can be imbued with protective qualities with the incense smoke okay particularly those that are key toward protection um sage a lot of folks like burning white sage it has a beautiful fragrance i also like using bay leaves so just like i said you can take a few bay leaves and put them on top of um an incense charcoal and it, it it makes a wonderful wonderful fragrant smoke that gets rid of negativity and abuse protection it also helps with focus and clarity as well now I want to tell you a little bit about how spiritual protection works uh, not that long ago my youngest daughter was walking downtown with a friend of hers and they were on their way to an event and they were walking um in a public outdoor mall that we have here and there's lots of shopping and lots of people and they happened to be going past the h&m department store and there's you know lots of people out walking by and there was a group of folks that had a table like a folding table set up outside of um h&m and they were hawking five dollar tarot readings and the folks walking past were just like no you know no no nobody wanted one of these things so by the time my daughter and her friend you know walked by one of the women and, and i believe she said there were three women and one men at this table one man at the table um one of the women jumps up out her seat now gets in front of my child and is trying to persuade her 
to come get a reading because she can sense she's got a strong light around her and all this stuff and that she's got some important messages from the future to give her and it only costs five dollars and i know you got five dollars what's five dollars and my daughter